that, baby. We got to dominate, dominate baby. baby. We're going all the way. Wait all my life. Oh, man. Man. Unbelievable. What an afternoon of football. We're on another level, baby. We're getting there. We started the season knowing that it was a journey. There was a 16 game journey, and we was going to take one journey at a time. The 1998 Atlanta Falcons began their journey week one in Carolina, as their defensive dominance would be a sign of things to come. Captained by quarterback Chris Chandler, this season-long voyage was just beginning. And after winning their first season opener on the road in 12 years, the Falcons' momentum propelled them past Philadelphia and face-to-face -face with NFC powerhouse San Francisco. First time we played them, we thought we were better than um, we were at the time, and, and they were moving quicker and, and making more plays than we were. The Falcons were given a hard slap of reality as they lost 31-20. But Atlanta turned frustration into determination. After that game, Chuck Smith got up in front of the team and kind of challenged the team, you know, that, uh, you know, we got to play faster and harder and smarter and all that stuff. And it was really exactly what the team needed to hear at that point. But I think the defining moment was the second Carolina game. You know, they totally disrespected us and said the first game was a fluke. And that second game, we went out there and we said, hey, we know we're better than those guys, and we blew them out. That's when we said, hey, man, we play our game. We can beat anybody. The Falcons took their game to the Panthers, and they set an NFL record, scoring three touchdowns in 48 seconds. How about that? Week six marked Dan Reeves' triumphant return to the Meadowlands as his squad manhandled his former team 34-20. Looking to keep wins coming, Atlanta sought its seventh straight victory over the Saints. Falcon defense continued to create offense, and Atlanta secured a 31-23 victory and the best start in team history. Even though we were winning, everybody was saying, well, you know, they've done it against teams with losing records. And that frustrates you because, you know, you're still doing what you need to do, but people keep talking about, well, you can't compete with the good teams. And when facing good teams, Atlanta had the most to prove. And against the doubters and disbelievers, they did just that. Looking across the middle. Here comes the yes. pressure. The ball is loose. Behind the merciless defense that forced five turnovers and a pair of determined touchdown catches by Dirty Bird originator O.J. Santiago, Atlanta knocked the Pats off their first place pedestal, winning 41-10. The next mission for the Dirty Birds was a 49er rematch that would prove to be the measure of these men. You know, each and every week we had to prepare for the opponent, but we were like, we are one more week, one more week, Niners, next week, you know, a couple weeks away. And so for us, it was everybody was ready to go, man. We, we wanted those guys, I mean, bad. In front of a sellout crowd, sole possession of the NFC West was waiting to be claimed. You know what they always say? When you beat an opponent, they're always a little hungry in the second time around. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know I'm hungry. Guys, let's lay it on the line. Next play is the biggest play of the game. Ooh, let's get it done. Let's win this thing on three. One, two, three. Yeah. Young will throw, setting up, throwing downfield, and it's intercepted. Ray Buchanan, 30, 25, still on his feet, 20, now cutting it back inside the field. Looking for a block, can he get one? Now, on his feet, still going, still going, on his feet, spinning for the end zone, and tackled at the two-yard line. With exceptional play on both sides of the ball, Atlanta led by five points in the fourth quarter. But the Falcons were far from finished. And the dirty bird dance in the end zone. 
Good job, T. Wynn. That's your touchdown. That's your touchdown. God, you can. Play action. Chandler will throw. Flying time. Going long. Near side. Matt Oh, Oh, oh. With a convincing victory, Atlanta finally proved their prowess. Hey, they've been beating up on us for years. We tired of getting beat up. We tired of them, baby. Yes. Yes. Listen up, man. I know how excited you are, because I am too. I feel you. Guys, it's a, that's a great win. I mean, we've gotten ourselves in position now with six games to go, and it's left up to us is what we do with it. We know how hard it was to get here. We're going to pay the price to keep it going from here. Against Chicago, quarterback and team leader Chris Chandler was looking to guide Atlanta to a franchise-high eighth home win as they attempted to truly establish dome field advantage. Chandler threw a pair of second-half touchdown passes, but early in the fourth quarter, the Bears jumped off sides and tackled Chandler, injuring his ankle and knee. The only way the Falcons knew how to win was as a team, and 44-year-old backup quarterback Steve DeBerg did his part as Atlanta ran the ball out of trouble and ran away with a 2013 victory. We have no celebrities. We have no top-name guys. We don't have a ton of multimillionaires. You don't see us on cover of Sports Illustrated doing a lot of national commercials, but we are a hard-working group and we believe in each other. Week 13, the Falcons did more than believe. They performed. Jamal Anderson ran for a career-high 188 yards. And a week later, after shaking off injuries, quarterback Chris Chandler didn't miss a step and threw for a season-high 297 yards and two touchdowns against the Colts. Jamal still on his feet, trying to get some extra yardage. Anybody in this league is capable of winning week in and week out. Did a good job now of hanging in there because things looked bad in the first half. Great job of coming back and winning the football game. He started with the little things first, you know, attention to detail. No helmets on the ground. You know, wear your uniform in practice, how you wear it in the game. We're like, oh, get out of here. I talked to one of my buddies last week and I'm telling him, you got to do the little things. I'm like, oh, sound like Coach Reeve. We got a chance to go out there today and prove we're champions. Let's get after him from the start. Win this thing on three. One, two, three. Yeah. I really think he's the best coach in the NFL right now. It's almost like he's prepared himself all this time for right now. You know, I played the game, I love the game. To me, it's the greatest game in the world. Uh, it's so much like life itself. I enjoy being around young people. It makes you feel young. And hopefully, they'll continue to enjoy being around me. I just wanted to say hi to the folks at home. Make sure everybody's watching and need yeah. the support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, you better have a good it's game. It's the playoff tickets. He's going to call a good game. I'm going to run a good game. You got it. Behind Dan Reeves' coaching and Jamal Anderson's running, records were falling. With seven straight victories, Anderson's 10th 100 yard game, and a new club mark for receiving yards by Terrence Mathis, it seemed nothing could stop this fairy tale season from having anything but a happy ending. Looking across the middle, Terrence Mathis complete. Mathis 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. Terrence Mathis touchdown Falcons. And that is a heck of a play to help seal the deal here. We started this day the same way before the game. I told you, you're going to do a great job coaching. I'm going to do a great job running. Now, all these people, go get your playoff tickets. We, want you to, we, want to we are in the playoffs. That's yeah, yeah. true. Uh, go get your true. tickets. Go get your, we're going to keep rolling now. Dan Reeves right now is undergoing bypass heart surgery in Atlanta after feeling ill during Sunday's game with the Saints. The strength of the entire Falcons team seemed to come from the power of one as a thankful Reeves was recovering. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the outreach and everything that everybody's done and, and know that I'm doing fine and, and I appreciate it. Despite quadruple bypass heart surgery, Reeves was still leading the way for the Falcons. Look here, man, you got a chance to do something very special. The guy up in Atlanta's already proud of it. Let's make him proud about winning the day. All we, want, all we need is 60 minutes of hard working football. And Ben, if you love football, you gotta love today. Chandler 
looking long, back of the end zone. Touchdown, Terrence Mathis. We wow. can't stop. We won't stop. Atlanta didn't stop. Fueled by the fire sparked by Reeves' absence, the Falcons were obsessed with success. See Jamal still on his feet, still going. He stands lunging for the touchdown. No. Down seven points in the fourth quarter, Jamal Anderson's heart would be tested. Not only was a victory resting on his valor, but a division title as well. This is it. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. 13 and 2. The game. Jamal bounces off one man into the end zone. Touchdown. First of all, the first guy who's going to get a game ball is Dan Reed. Less than four weeks after heart surgery, Dan Reeves, Will, and his team would once again be tried by San Francisco. We just said if we match their intensity, we'll have an opportunity to beat them. And I think we overmatched their intensity that game. Guys, let's go for 60 minutes. Win this thing on three. One, two, three. In 1998, Jamal Anderson set a club record for rushing yards in a season with 1,846 behind a stellar offensive line. The determined runner quickly put the Falcons in the lead with one of the greatest individual efforts of the season. Dive to the goal line. Touchdown, Atlanta. What a run by him. He was in the air for the last three yards for the score. That was a sensational football run. And now the bird is the word. Atlanta seemed to make their own luck all season long as did a dangerous Tim Dwight. Here's Tim Dwight, he takes it in 5, 10, 15, looking to get outside. But despite apparent destiny, Atlanta's fortunes began to turn as Chandler's pass was batted down and then intercepted. The 49ers maintained possession and threatened to take the game in the final minutes of the fourth quarter as the Falcons felt their two-point lead slipping away. Defense. It's gonna be on us, just the way we want it, just the way we want it. Yeah. With one final pass, championship fate would be sealed. Rolling, looking, going long, near sideline, ball is up for grabs. Who has it? We came in here and we beat them, just like we said we would. Everybody in here, you know, contributed to the win. It took everybody to get the job done. A lot of things happened in the ball game we had no control over, and we did a great job of hanging in there and winning the football game, guys. Heck of a job. Everybody in here gets a game ball. We accomplished so many goals. Uh, we we couldn't uh, beat a team that had a winning record. We couldn't win on the road. You know, we haven't. You know play to our capabilities. We was hearing all type of things and people putting hurdles and hurdles in front of us and we just kept jumping over them. You sit there and say, hey, this is a chance to do something special here. We know how hard it is to get to this point. Let's not waste it. The Falcons marched into a hostile Metro Dome trying to earn a trip to the Super Bowl for the first time in team history. The Falcons put the pressure on in the opening drive of the game. Complete touchdown Falcons. Jamal Anderson out of the backfield. And here is the Dirty Bird dance making its debut in the upper Midwest inside the Metrodome. Atlanta's celebration was short-lived as Minnesota matched the Falcons' resolve and nodded the game at seven. The Vikings continued their assault on Atlanta and scored on their next three possessions, building a 20-7 lead. However, Dan Reeves and his Atlanta Falcons had become experts on comebacks. Falcon defense set the tone behind a stingy backfield led by Pro Bowl-bound cornerback Ray Buchanan and a hard-hearted bomb squad 
that included Jesse Tuggle, Cornelius Bennett, Lester Archambault, Shane Dronet, Travis Hall, and Chuck Smith. Come on, D, let's go! Let's go, D! Cunningham will throw, setting up, and the yes, ball yes. is loose. The ball yes. is loose. He was stripped of it as he attempted to throw the football. That's what the Falcons need, some turnovers. They need to get some opportunities, and now they have it with 59 seconds left before halftime. Chuck Smith gave the Falcons the ball at the Vikings' 14-yard line and also gave Atlanta hope. Setting up, going across oh. the middle. Touchdown, Falcons, Harris Mathis. And all of a sudden, this game looks much different, Jeff, than it did just a couple of minutes ago. How about that? We can compete with these dudes, man. We can compete with these fellas, man. Way to go, champ. A crazy contest saw the Falcons not only challenging, but also gaining momentum as they cut the Vikings' lead to only seven in the fourth quarter. However, the Falcons failed to convert a fourth down play, and the ball went back to Minnesota. All Dan Reeves could do was watch as the Vikings' flawless kicker was sure to put the game out of reach. And this is from 39 yards out. Here's the snap. The kick is up, and it is no good. No good. Gary Anderson has missed a field goal for the first time in two years. The season isn't over yet. No, it's not over yet. Coming down and in, baby, just like we like it. It's our game, baby, our game. With just over two minutes left to play, Atlanta embarked upon the most critical drive in team history. hurting right now. The siege almost ended as the ragged warrior called a timeout after re-injuring his knee. However, Chris Chandler battled back with bravery and returned. With one chance, one play, and less than a minute remaining, the ball was snapped. Chandler will throw, setting up, left side, looking, looking, throwing. A does he have it? Yes. yes! Touchdown, Falcons! Great poise by Chris Chandler. Showed up, showed the world, and it's overtime, and it's time to get these guys. In overtime, the Vikings won the toss and the ball as their big play offense tested a determined Falcon defense. Oh, my goodness. And that ball, <laughs> Jeff, in and out of the hands of Randy Moss. Scary. <laughs> The Falcons' overtime possession started at their own nine-yard line, and Atlanta began yet another critical drive. Getting the ball away. Oh! Santiago makes the catch in territory of the Vikings. After moving the ball into Viking territory, the Falcons' destiny rested on the foot of Morton Anderson. A chance to go to the Super Bowl. 38-yard field goal by Morton Anderson. The hold, the kick, it's on the way, it's up and it's going. The Falcons are going to the Super Bowl. The Falcons have done it. They have done the unthinkable. They have won inside the Metro Dome, and the celebration is underway on the field. an unbelievable victory, an unbelievable afternoon to come in here to beat the Minnesota Vikings inside the Metrodome, 30 to 27. I knew I thought we were doing it. It's been 33 years. Falcons ain't never been to the Super Bowl. We're going now. We're going. In their 33-year history, the Atlanta Falcons have shed more tears of sorrow than of triumph. And after winning, perhaps, the most exciting NFC Championship game ever played, years of pain were wiped away in one unforgettable afternoon, in one incredible season, as the Falcons journeyed to their first Super Bowl. So we are ready. Fans are on their feet here in Pro Player Stadium. We are ready for Super Bowl 33. The flash balls are on. 
up to this point, you've earned everything you've got. You're going to earn it again today, all right? Because it ain't going to be you easy. You need to hear what you say. Let's do it with action. Right. Let's win this football game. Math is complete. Math is still going. Auto running from 45 up the midfield. That they first down. Finally gets the Falcons on the scoreboard. Man. 12-37 left in the football game. Denver 24-6. Now, Jeff, it gets very, very difficult in the fourth quarter of a Super Bowl game when you are down the way the Falcons are right now. Yes, let's lay it on that. Come on, fellas. Hey, let's keep it on them, baby. Keep the back on. It's up the air race. Now yes. Tim Dwight. 20, 10, 5, touchdown. Oh. The achievements of 1998 didn't come without the blood, the sweat, and the courage of an entire team. A Super Bowl victory was perhaps just out of reach, but triumph was not. Win or lose, okay, and I respect you. Win or lose. It's an honor and a pleasure. Here we are, sitting, uh, sitting at the Super Bowl, and granted, this was a disappointing evening. But you know what, doggone it. How thrilling it was to follow the Atlanta Falcons. Tell you what, I have never been so proud in my life. I wish my dad was here. I know he's up there watching and all that stuff, but don't tell what we can do. At this point on where we are now, it'll continue to go up here. And, and right now, you know, I'm just proud to be an Atlanta Falcon. There's only one football that went through the goalpost. You know, I wish I'd cut it up and everybody have a piece of it. Yeah, right, coach, like a rock, baby, like a rock. That's a great, coach. That's a great. Hey, we said we could do it. Nobody believed, but now we know it. We just shocked the world now. Shocked the whole world. Yeah, we are the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Dirty Birds, we've been in this before. We knew 60 minutes you got to come fight us. Oh, it's Birdie Bird!